Representative Hodges, question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Morrell. Um, I do have a couple of questions and a couple of concerns. I hope that y'all can clarify to me. Um, we already have the law on the books, as you know, and, and I got staff to check. 15 people have been prosecuted recently, as recently as last year, for bestiality. And so I, I guess I'm asking why, why are we bringing, uh, making a whole new law? Well, I, I think there is no question that people can be prosecuted under the current law. There is a concern that other people, if you, if in conversations with law enforcement, in order to fill the loopholes the law doesn't cover, they try, they try very diligently to try and use the loopholes that exist in the current bestiality law to prosecute people under 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 animal cruelty. There are significant challenges there because unless the animal is actually damaged, you really don't beat the threshold in the animal cruelty side. So I would challenge, yes, there are 15 people that were charged. There could, there, there could have been 150 people that should have been charged. Do you know if there, is, if there were cases that couldn't be charged? Uh, I, I, look, I applaud what you're doing. I, it is I, I the think, most think, sickening, disgusting thing. We don't Bro even want to talk about Ms. it. Bro can answer that. Okay. There, um, there was a case recently uh, where the individual that was assisting the woman in having sex with the dogs and filming it uh, was not able to be charged because he physically wasn't having sex with the dogs. He was just assisting the woman to Chris. have sex. So, which would not fall under the current which does not fall under the current statute statute statute. or animal cruelty. Okay, so have any other states adopted this yet? There have been five states that have adopted the same language as this in the past year. Uh, Texas was most recent. Okay. Um, okay, I have a question, a specific question online on page three. If we could just talk about this. is something that concerns me. I talked to Representative Stefanski about it. Hopefully we can fix this because I think it is a, it could be problematic. Um, well, on page two, line 16, it says animal means non-human, dead or alive. So if you take that in the new statute that you're proposing and we put it, and then you look at on page three, it says shall not harbor, own, or possess, or exercise control over any animal and not reside in any household where an animal is present, engage in an occupation, whether paid or unpaid. And now here's where my, my concern comes in. What about... A person, if they're charged and they go to jail, we can't send them to a prison where there's animals, where there's livestock. And there are present, presently um, jails that do have farm animals. So they, we can't go there. There are no vegan jails. So, you know, that's a concern that I have. And then there's the, empl the, the employment issue. Okay, of, can, we, can we go through? Sure. Which, well, okay. if, you, if you look at it... Um, the, the way the law is defined it specifically says a, a household or a job and prison is neither a household nor a job okay so i well, think so i think for that first point i think the way it's currently defined well uh, that's a point that's aside from okay. the other two issues okay. that is that's an issue that's not addressed in here but the other the constitutional issues that i fear might be in here is the employment restrictions and the housing restriction if after they get out of prison whichever if we have a vegan prison we're going to send them to because what about a chicken a chicken is a dead animal so i don't know how we're going to fix this they can't go back and live with their parents in their parents house if they have a dog because it does say a dead animal okay. and so we can't well, find them well the the, the the dog example you're 100 percent correct in that a person if their family has a dog but that being said there are current using that same example a person who's convicted of child molestation and is not allowed to work or operate in a household with children at a certain age if their children if their parents are watching or custodians of their grandchild that person can't go back to that household either and that's been upheld repeatedly as being constitutional as, as a and as far as a, as far as a dead animal a dead animal that is for consumption is food that is no longer right defined but it, as, it doesn't say that it, it just says it, dead animal if if that were the case then if someone what's that does that only apply to the section for dead we're talking yeah, about it, you're abusing the animal why, why don't you sorry exactly. i i the way I was reading it is that it only applies to that section where you're only talking about abusing the animal. And so, and as gross as this is, people actually do have sex with dead animals for the purpose of Right. This. So the reason why the statute says dead or alive is because if a person's having sex with a live animal or a dead animal, it's still bestiality. 
we need to clarify that. Uh, as, as far as your other constitutional co co concern regarding someone having, you know, no fried chicken or something like that, that is not no longer an animal. It is considered food definition. by definition. Valerie. Hang on just a second. Okay. Okay. Well, okay, Senator Morell, we just we need to clarify this. Um, staff agrees with me that it is very broad, and because it does say, if you look on page two, it says for purposes of this section, and it includes that in there. And it is ex this is extremely gross. I wish we weren't not having this conversation, but I we are. I wish we weren't having it too. Um, but we do need to we do need to fix this. If if if, if your point of clarification is that you want to give Sorry, some greater. Okay. tightening language regarding live and dead animal i am not opposed in principle to that. well it's it's not just that but it's the it's the residing the occupation the jail it what if it is challenged in court and what if it is ruled unconstitutional i i i know we've talked about this we've had a couple of conversations about going in and striking in your bill um adding back in the strike that says with an animal and i know we talked about it. we said it you're, kind you're of talking about you're talking about retaining the bestiality language in the sodomy law just in case even if we did it for a year to see if this would be upheld in court uh, okay a i don't believe in having two statutes on the books just in case I think that's a very dangerous precedent. To well, okay, say. but this is very broad, and I don't think it's going to be upheld in court. And then, what are we going to have to prosecute people on? This law is very similar to the law we use for child molestation, which has been upheld in the courts over and over again. There are plenty of people who, when when states started passing child molestation law restricting people's vocation, saying you cannot interact with children, people brought those challenges, saying, "Well, I'm someone that works in daycares. I should be back in a daycare." And the court said. No, as a condition in the law, since you were convicted of doing this heinous act, you don't get to work in daycare. So if a person is convicted of bestiality and they want to go work at a poultry processing plant, I think the courts can say, sorry, you can't work at a poultry processing plant. Now, also, but they can't go to Walmart either. If they're when an animal <laughs> is packaged this, for this food, three, this they, three minute debate is 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 up. Okay. I, 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 okay. Can we say asked and answered, Mr. Chairman? Asked and there answered. There you go. Asked okay. and answered. All right. Thank um, you. So, how can we tighten that language? Uh, if we want to talk about the saying that food is not included as part of dead animal, I am happy to work on that language with you. And what about the person that gets out of jail that has no place to go because their dog, their parents has a then parakeet? Their parents have to pick between the parakeet and their kid. <laughs> That's okay. that 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 that's what that means. Just just like if a, if, if the parents if the parents had a convicted child molester as a child, they were the guardians of a, of a minor child. They would have to decide whether or not. It asked and answered. Okay. You. Well, do you have a do you have an amendment? Yes, Representative I do. Hodges? Okay. Um, Representative Hodges, is your amendment? Yeah, 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 right. I, I believe it is. Okay. I, I believe it is. And just for the purposes of clarity, I just want to make sure um, that Senator Morrell will work with us. Uh, Kelly said she doesn't have time to do it on right now in committee, but to tighten the lanes. What we and, and I, I believe you, Senator Morrell, that you want to make this as bulletproof as possible. That it's not struck down. Representative and what I'm Mor doing is simply in it just in, in to make sure that the statute stands until till we have this bulletproof. And I think we can work on it well, well, to do to, that. To, to be clear, I am more than willing to work with you on the proposed statute to tighten the language in regards to the so that with, it's constitutional with, when regards to the with animal language in that debate we'll continue to have that debate but i want to be clear to the committee i'm not agreeing to that uh, and, and, and look, to, okay. the senator's going to keep Thank an you. open mind and the representative's going to work with him and we're, right all right miss fogelman but you do have an amendment that you do wish to offer right? yes. miss fogelman explain the amendment Mr. Chairman and members, the set of amendments um, is number 3217 being offered by Representative Hodges. And what it does is restores present law with regard to um, RS 1489 by deleting from the bill on page one, lines eight through 17. And then we would have to make technical changes to the title to conform. Okay. Is there any questions on the amendment? Uh, can I speak on the amendment, Mr. Chairman? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, essentially, this is the ongoing debate. Um, there are some individuals that would like there to be dual bestiality laws on the books. Uh, the purpose of doing this bill is to create 
a concise, specific law dealing with bestiality. And though I appreciate uh, Representative Hodges' concerns, I think this muddies the law tremendously and it creates two separate statutes on what you can be charged. And that is not the goal. In other states that have done this update of the bestiality law, they have done the same thing that I'm doing, which is there is a single bestiality law in the books and they delete the previous one. So for example, strategic, strategically speaking, or, or, or Procedurally speaking, if we create a new law dealing with a different act that replaces an old one, let's say a new armed robbery law, we don't keep the old armed robbery law on the book while we're testing the new armed robbery law. We replace it. And that's what we're doing with bestiality. There have been some concerns, and I'm sure you've seen all of the media on it regarding whether or not this bill does something that it doesn't do. The bill is about bestiality. The bill is about updating and modernizing the law, and this amendment undermines that. So I would ask you to please, I am not in favor of this amendment. Okay, Representative Hodges has offered the amendment. Do we have a quorum? Yes. Okay, we have a quorum. Representative Hodges has offered the amendment. Representative Marcel has objected to the amendment. A vote yes would be to add the amendment on. A vote no would be to not. Hang on just a minute. Give us a couple seconds. Okay. All right. Uh, Representative Hazel, a vote yes would be to vote the amendment um, on the bill. Representative Hodges' amendment, a vote no would be to not and to leave the bill in its current posture. Ms. Spivey, would you take the roll? Representative Bacala? Yes. Yes. Representative Bagneris? No. No. Representative Carpenter? Representative Cruz? Representative Duplessis? No. No. Representative Dwight? No. No. Representative Gaines? Representative Hazel? No. No. Representative Hodges? Yes. Yes. Representative Howard? Yes. Yes. Representative James? Representative Marcel? No. no. Representative Marino? No. No. Representative Muscarello? Representative Norton? No. No. Representative Pilot? Representative Stefanski? Which one? This one? Yes. No. 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 <laughs> no, let me let me clarify. Representative Stefanski, let me clarify. There's an amendment by Representative Hodges that would delete um, basically the RS 1489. RS 1489 from the bill. A vote yes would be to accept the amendment. A vote no would be to not and leave the bill in the original, original posture. Okay. Representative Stefanski, no. We have three yeas, eight nays. <laughs> <laughs> there are three three yeas eight nays and the amendment is not adopted <laughs> 